All right, we're gonna take a close look, see if we've got any spark. I'm gonna run this thing over. Absolutely no spark. So, we'll back things up, get down to the points. I'm pointing at you, points. Let's get you off of there. Tiny screws. Tiny screws needs a tiny parts tray. So let's get a tiny parts tray. Let's stick it on the muffler. Okay. Easy does it. Yep, they've just they're just dirty. I'm gonna make sure that they uh, roll over like they're supposed to. Open and close, I mean. Let's see here. Go slow. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's get the camera in a different position. be able to see the points open and close here. I'll go slow. Now I gotta move you back and I can leave it there. Let you guys get a nice big close-up. And I have a lot of people say, don't use sandpaper on points. Don't use the you'll ruin them. Guys, I use 2,000 grit. I'm going to show you something. This right here is brush seeder and commutator cleaner. And it is more coarse than this. Now I know, this is not points cleaner. I know that. But this is very, very fine. Very fine. This is 2000 grit. I can sand paint with this and actually polish paint with this 2000 grit paper. So please quit being naysayers. And all I do is let the pressure of the points try to get a good bit in there. And get the, let the just the spring tension of the points work to get the junk off. That's all I do. In fact, I go through most of my 2,000 grit doing this. And as long as I've been doing it, I've never destroyed a set of points because of it. And you pull it through until there is no longer any discoloration coming off on the paper. So I keep tearing the paper. We've still got some discoloration going on there. You can see that line there. Just a little bit of oxidization on the top of the points. And that's all I'm taking off. Just that little bit. Alright. Now, let's get up here. Go roll it over again. See if that simple little cleaning job gave us spark. Fingers crossed, right? Still nothing. I'm going to get my induction tester. the induction bulb in it they tend to uh, recognize a much weaker spark I want to know if I've got anything at all and if I don't that means I've got to go into the coil make sure I've got a good ground too let's move this to a better spot where we've got better metal contact Just 
Hey there. Now we're looking for light right here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but I will. No light, so we'll come around to the coil and pay attention to that now. Uh, the kill wire is actually a push button on the cap. You can see there, that's what kills it. So there is no actual wire coming out of the points. Something else I can do is to release and then re-tighten the condenser screw. You may have a little bit of muck there. We'll try that real quick. Just loosen it, tighten it a couple times. We'll check again for spark. Still nothing. So now we'll rip the blower housing off and see if we've got something going on under there. Hang on. All right, gang. Well, you're not going to get spark when the wire for the coil isn't attached where it's supposed to be. And it looks like all that happened. Here it is right here. The connector came off. And it should be bolted right there. I'm going to give you a better perspective. There. Right here is where it bolts onto. It's an insulated plate. That just broke off. So I'll strip it, put an end on it. We'll stick it on, see if we've got spark then. The coil on this one is behind the flywheel. And this flywheel doesn't look like it's ever been off. So that's one thing I do not want to do is have to tear into this flywheel and try to free the flywheel because the end of the shaft's all buggered up. It's been welded on and then something's been cut off of it. It'd just be a nightmare to try to get the flywheel off. So fingers crossed. Taking care of that right there and getting it reattached where it's supposed to be will give us spark. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. All right. I got that wire taken care of. It's just out of view. We're going to see if we have spark now. Shut the lights off so we might be able to see it a little better. So we're going to see together. If we have spark, it should jump across right around here. Are we ready? Give me spark. First, I need power in the drill. Here we go. Well... I didn't have to take the flywheel off. You have no idea how happy that makes me. I am ecstatic over that. All right, all that's left now, throw the carburetor on, introduce some gas, see if we can't get it to run and get that carburetor tuned. Then we've got another one for the shell. A Clinton 9.6 horse, red horse cast iron. Interesting motor. All right. Stay tuned. Well, it is moment of truth time. Keep your fingers crossed I don't kill myself because sometimes when these things start, my drill will jump back at me and bite me. Let me get this cord down and out of the way. Plenty out of the way. All right, choke is on. I've got the idle set way down, but there's a lot of spring tension from the governor. So we'll see what happens. Noivus, this part always makes me nervous. Afraid I'm gonna break a wrist. I need to go this way. Okay. Are we ready? In three. To, oh, and by the way, I mean, it is ice, ice cold. I have not tried to start. I just took the gas tank off so I can get the bolts on the shroud and get it secured. I don't like this part. Here we go.
smoke. Man, it's a powerful engine. Everything was just jumping all over everywhere. I'm not real worried about getting the carb dialed in. I just know that this sucker runs. I will drain the carb back out, which is going to be interesting because there's no way to drain it from the underneath side. But there we have it. The old Clinton is alive. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make this available to any of you Clinton collectors out there. Uh, let me show you the tag again. This is the sample Clinton. Sample number 9521. Model number B2590. I do have the gas tank. I just didn't have the right fitting for the line. But it's alive. Yay. All right. Now it's time for Tin Horse. If you guys like this video, like my other engine videos, please do me a solid. Tickle that thumbs up button for me. This was an interesting little adventure. Learned something new about that big Walbro carburetor with that massive jet. But I think I'll just start her back up and run it until it runs out of fuel. All right. Please, please, tickle the like button. It's Zippo. Later. I'm out of here. All right, gang. I'm going to tack this on to the Clinton engine. Uh, just as an FYI, this engine is the 10 horse that I'm getting spark back on, that I'm getting repaired and ready to go for one of my subscribers. And I wanted to show him that with the Easy Start Spin, which has the compression relief, it is putting out 115 PSI at about 25-30% of that's your actual uh, compression ratio. It is doing fantastic. So we've got really, really good compression on the engine. I did a leak down. Leak down falls within the spec. Um, all I've got to do is get spark back into it. We'll get a bench run on it. And as soon as I get all that done, I will shoot a video of it running. But I wanted to tack this on to the Clinton engine video just to give a, pre a prelude to what's to come. So we'll see you guys later.